packing small and light on the daily grind to the office is the best when I can get away with it. But lately, I've been finding myself traveling more frequently, which has me taking around a backpack with my essential gear to stay prepared and comfortable while on the go. Let's see what's inside. When it comes to bags, there's no shortage of options out there for sizes, compartments, even ergonomics and aesthetics can play important roles depending on what your priorities are. It's hardly perfect, but the Vinta Type 2 is the one I find myself reaching for the most when packing for a trip. It sports a stylish, upscale urban look that pairs very well with the drip. But at the core, it's designed to be a rugged camera bag, meaning you get a lot of functionality along with the form. It does an excellent job of rejecting splashes from random rain showers, and even dirt, making it easy to clean. In fact, I've been using this bag for three years and it still looks brand new. Unzip the back and you have full access to the interior, including a padded compartment, which you can use for documents or a 15 inch laptop. Feel free to just throw stuff in the bag or the type two comes with these matching packing cubes to help organize your stuff. Personally, I like packing common items I need quickly in the smaller cube and I place it at the top of the bag for easy access via the zipper flap on the front. If there are any downsides to the Vinta type two, it's that there are times when it feels like it's either too big or not big enough. Try to pack slimmer and the bag doesn't compress down the way you want. Stuff the bag with everything and the kitchen sink and even if you manage to get the zippers closed, it'll look bulky, feel bulky, especially on your back and without any waist or chest straps to help distribute the weight, your shoulders will feel it as the day progresses. Well, this sounds like a pain in the ass to deal with. Working within the limitations of your bag can help boil down the pack to the core essentials. If I find that I'm struggling with the bag in any way, odds are it's because I'm over-preparing or at the very least, it might not be the right bag for the job. Of course, I'm sure you guys have your own preferences for what backpacks you like. So let me know what you guys rock in the comments below. As a YouTuber, I might be biased using a camera bag as the centerpiece of my travel setup because I got to film wherever work takes me. This means hauling around a travel-sized version of my video studio to shoot Denki content with minimal compromises to quality. Of course, I need a camera. This is my workhorse, the full-frame Sony FX3 that can shoot up to 4K 120 frames per second. It's actually what I'm using to capture this video right now. Batteries and this awesome case to hold them in that can charge two of them over USB-C and also hold my SD cards. My primary lens is the Sony G Master 16 to 35 f 2.8, which is what I use for like 90% of my filming nowadays. I also have this mini teleprompter that sits on my lens and holds my phone so that I can read my script because I can't wing for shit. For audio, I use a Sennheiser AVX lab kit. And while the FX3 is great in low light, I like taking around this RGB brick light from Aperture to help as an accent or to brighten up hotel rooms or locations with tricky camera lighting. All of this fits in the Vinta Type 2's packing cube with room to spare. And to wrap it all up, especially if I need to film myself, a basic tripod is kind of important. And this one from Obin is awesome. It's lightweight, thin and sturdy, which is perfect for tabletops and can also extend to head height. When the shooting is all said and done, the entire package stows away in this nice little bag that sits cleanly in the side pouch of the Vinta Type 2. All of my work, whether I'm in the office or away on business, is done on Apple's 14-inch MacBook Pro. Hear me out! <laughs> It's seriously impressive how quickly things render and preview, meaning I can chip away at my timeline without breaking a sweat. My spec is built with the powerful M1 Max, 32 gigs of RAM, and a two terabyte SSD. And while I feel like I'm barely taxing the system to its full potential with my workload, the comfortable amount of headroom is good for edge cases as well as for future-proofing. After all, the hope is that I can work with this machine for many years to come. This isn't even mentioning that I'm a slave to the Apple ecosystem. <laughs> 
I shoot an ungodly amount of stills and video on my iPhone for YouTube thumbnails and for full videos. So features like AirDrop and even one-click internet hotspot are a lifesaver when I'm rushing to get stuff out. All this with decent battery life that can last a day on lighter tasks or about six hours if I'm powering through a Denki edit. If you've been watching Denki for a bit, you probably know that I'm a sucker for Sony audio products. Peep the side of my bag and I have my headphones, the Sony WH-1000X Mark V. This newest entry builds on what worked from the Mark IV to make their best Bluetooth headphones yet. The Mark V loses the ability to fold down in favor of a more fixed design. While this has been met with mixed reviews, I actually like the rigidity it adds to the build quality even if this means that the case has to take up a slightly larger footprint. But something a little more uncontested with the 1000X Mark V is its sound quality. And these are absolutely phenomenal. The sound signature isn't anything new. Call it warm with a curve for bass and treble that many will find pleasant for movies and music. But the most noticeable improvement is in the active noise canceling, which is absolutely nuts considering the Mark IV was already good to begin with. This is all thanks to Sony doubling the amount of microphones they used in the Mark IV, bringing the total to eight, as well as adding a new processor to take advantage of all of this additional hardware. All this helps to cancel more of those mid and high range frequencies that the Mark IV tended to struggle a bit with. Think along the lines of a whirring jet engine or a baby crying. Now, for reference, the ANC is still not as aggressive as the AirPods Max. However, the Sonys are miles lighter and will also let you wire via its 3.5 millimeter aux without any weird adapter bull****, which means I can use these for video editing or gaming where low latency matters. Work is nice and all, but we do it to play hard. And if the trip I'm planning is more on the leisure side, in place of my camera gear, I like packing Valve's Steam Deck to play during downtime while waiting for something in line or chilling in my hotel room. I'm not gonna go into depth since I already covered it in another video. If you wanna check it out, click on the card up here. But to sum up my thoughts, since the deck can already play an impressive amount of PC games in a small, complete package that can fit in a backpack, it's perfect for catching up on my ever-growing backlog of Steam games that I'll definitely finish at some point. My backpack wouldn't be complete without these support pieces that prepare me for anything a trip can throw my way. Tech or not, I try to include these items in any pack, regardless of where I'm going or for how long. And they're fairly easy to stow too. I like packing this SanDisk Extreme one terabyte SSD, getting me around eight to 900 megabytes per second, perfect for shuttling large files, or when I want to free up space on the faster internal MacBook SSD. On the topic of my laptop, power is also very important. Power! especially if I plan on working away from a plug for a few hours. So recently I went and picked up this Anchor PowerCore 3 Elite battery bank. It's rated to charge the 14 inch MacBook at a respectable 87 watts. That is as long as you're using a cable other than the one that was included with it because it only does 60. It certainly won't top the MacBook off to 100% from zero, but it will buy you a couple of extra hours of uptime, which can make make the difference when you're working. This in a package that can even fit in a smaller sling bag if you wanna charge something smaller on the go. But when I do have access to an outlet, I like using Razer's 130 watt Gallium Nitride Fast Charger to replenish power between all of my devices quickly and in a form factor that's smaller than most laptop bricks. At a steep $180, it's rather pricey for what it is, and for my money, I'd rather go with one of the many other affordable options that tick all of the same boxes. I'll link some in the description below that undercut this particular charger by almost $100. Just as a battery backup can be useful for longer days on the go, prepping a kit of simple bits and bobs can get you through some randomness. 
I like packing things like aspirin in case I start developing headaches, and lens wipes if I need to clean my glasses or screens, or fucking lenses. I even like taking around a windbreaker. This one's from a cool artist called Omona that can fold down very small. I actually end up using it a fair bit here in Southern California, where temperatures can change dramatically from day to night or for the few times a year it decides to rain. Of course, if you're curious about anything I talked about in this video, the links will be in the description below, and let me know, what do you have in your backpack?